Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. I haven't been on YouTube for a while and I'm sure you understand why. Um, physically I am getting stronger and uh, praise the Lord for that. Um, I hope there's not going to be too many glitches in this. That I've been noticing in my, um, my um, program for uh, videotaping <laughs> has been acting a little odd. Um, but anyway, so if there's any glitches, uh, I hope they won't be major ones. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this, um, something that's been bothering me for quite a while. And that is um, this uh, gospel of saved by uh, confession uh, gospel. Um, it has some glitches and I, I needed to, um, I needed to address it. Um, I'm going to try and stay on track, so just bear with me. It's not going to be easy for me because this is never easy. However, I, I, f I feel I need to make this video, and that is um, this idea that we are not saved by works, but by grace alone. And not and I think that there are people who have a great deal under misunderstanding as to what grace really is. Um, they seem to have a feeling that there are no works involved in salvation. Um, and this is from this particular verse they hear that says this, uh, I think it comes from Romans, Romans chapter 10. Let's start at verse, uh, verse, verse 9. No, let's start at verse 8. Uh, but what, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thy heart man for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with his mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him if they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith unto the Lord, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay. This is a, an important scripture. There's no doubt about it. An important scripture. Um, but this is, seems to be the salvation uh, recipe for most of, Chris, uh, most of Christendom. Well, most of Christendom believes this, that if you only believe in, you believe in your heart and confess the name of the Lord, you shall be saved, and that's all you need to do. And they ignore the rest of the scriptures. They ignore Jesus Christ. And they think that that believing is all you need. Um, well, I beg to differ. Uh, because this is uh, only the beginning of your salvation. <laughs> this is not the end of it. This is the beginning. This is the first step. Okay. Now let's just go to, first of all, let me just go to the book of Acts. And you see the Ethiopian eunuch. And God sends him, the very thing he says here, he sends him a preacher. Is here, let's just read that again. Um, how, um, they that call upon him shall, um, how then shall they call upon them who have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who have not heard? And how shall they hear them without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good glad tidings of good things. But they have not obeyed the gospel. They have not all obeyed the gospel. So, um, for Isaiah saith, Lord who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay. Now let's go to the book of, of Acts. In the book of Acts, we have the Ethiopian eunuch, who is on the roadside reading the, from the book of Isaiah, this very word. That he says here, for Isaiah saith unto the Lord. And now we hear we have the Ethiopian eunuch on the side of the road reading from the book of Isaiah. 
And God, guess what? God sends him a preacher. There is this. Verse chapter 8 of um, the book of Acts, verse 29. Then the Spirit saith unto Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand thou which thou readest? So here's the preacher being sent to show him the, the, the gospel, the gospel of peace. The same thing. Here, who's going to send the preacher? The preacher has to send this gospel. And what's the gospel? Well, let's read what, what uh, the book of Acts, what Philip does here, because here we have the scenario that we just read about, sending the gospel. <clears throat> and he said, this is verse 31, um, how can I, so the Ethiopian eunuch is saying, how can I, how can I understand, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he should come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture he, he read was this, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet of the, the prophet this, of himself or some other man? So the eunuch is confused by the scripture. He knows that it's referring to somebody, but he doesn't understand who it is. So here you have the preacher explaining, preaching to this eunuch. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So obviously, Philip was preaching to him Jesus, but also baptism. Because otherwise, why would he be doing that? Why would he suddenly stop at the water and say, Look, there's water. What's stopping me from being baptized now? <laughs> so obviously, he this verse here, in, in back here in, in the book of, um, of Romans, Romans chapter 10, he that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how can they know what the gospel is without a preacher? So God sends this eunuch, the preacher, who preaches him Jesus Christ and baptism. Let's continue. Let's just continue on. It says, um, what hindereth me from being me to be baptized? Now, he's asking a legitimate question. What is the qualifications for me to get into this water, to be baptized into Christ Jesus. What do I have to do in order to get into this new salvation, this gospel that you're preaching to me? And this is what he says. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, if you believe with all your heart, you will get into the waters of baptism. Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He confesses with his mouth, he because he believed within heart, his heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That was the qualifications for him to get into the waters of baptism. He called upon the name of the Lord. The Lord sent the preacher. The preacher taught him Jesus Christ and baptism. They got into the water because he confessed with his mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then he got into the water and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went both down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. So let's go back to this, this, this salvation by confession alone, uh, scenario here, which is actually a, uh, actually, it's a, it's taken out of context, people. This whole, this, this salvation, but you shall be saved if you call upon the name, and then they leave it. They don't finish the scenario. They do not tell people you must get baptized. That is part of the gospel. Philip preached to the eunuch, Jesus Christ and baptism. And he said the qualifications for baptism was to believe with all your heart. Let's go back to what it says here. If thou confess with thy mouth Jesus is, is Lord and believe with all thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why would, if you believe with all your heart, shall you be saved? Because you'll be obedient. 
you obey the Lord who said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Those are Jesus' words in Mark 16. The book of Acts, Peter's first sermon without Christ, his solo sermon, the first premier sermon of evangelized sermon of Peter said, repent and be baptized every last one of you for the remission of your sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the full gospel. If you're only leaving at confession, you are, there's, there, there's two problems with just leaving your salvation at confession alone. The first is that you will fall into the trap of the church of Sar, uh, Smyrna, in the book of Revelation chapter 2 or 3, I think it's chapter 3, the church of Smyrna, which is a church without works. There are people who confess with their mouth, Jesus is Lord, and then go about their business, and most of them are filthy. They have not cleaned their robes, and they are, most of them, Christ is very unpleased with this, this church, because they had not completed their, their work. There is works. You have to do a work. Work Faith without works is dead. You show your faith by your works. You cannot show your faith without works. And this church of Smyrna says you just have to confess and now you're saved. That's all you have to do. Well, the work that you need to do is the finished work of Christ. When you are baptized, that is the finished work because Christ did the work. He, When he hung on the cross, he said it's finished. What he was saying was the work is done. I did the work. And when you are baptized into Christ, which by the way is in the same book of this book of Romans, you have this confession, you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and then you have, believe with all your heart, you will do the work that Christ told you to do. But in the book of Romans chapter 6, the same book where we have this verse, it says, therefore, uh, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? This is chapter 6. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we shall walk in newness of life. We have been planted together in the likeness of death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, and henceforth we shall not serve death. For that, for he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we sh there. And we believe that we also shall live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in him that he, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves also to be dead unto sin, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey its lust thereof. What he's saying here is. When you are in Christ, the work has been done. You are saved by works, people. Not your works, but by Christ's work. When you, the, the problem with confession alone, the, the confession of, well, I, I call upon the name of the Lord, save me. Okay, that's the beginning. <laughs> that's the beginning of your salvation. But if you leave it there, the problem, there's two things that happen. You will fall into the trap of the Smyrna church that, that call upon the name of the Lord and then they go about their business doing what they always did because they haven't got the transforming power of Christ Jesus. They are not dead to their sins and they will continue to live in their sins and they have not been cleansed. Or you will fall into the trap of religion, which means I have to be good enough for God. I've got to do the work. I've got to be give this da, 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 and maybe I'll get into heaven. You see, that's the, that's the spirit of religion. And those are the two problems that happen when you leave baptism out of the out of the salvation scenario. You will fall into the trap of religion or you will fall into the trap of, of uh, filthiness and you will continue to walk in your sins. You have not been cleansed. But when you include the full gospel, see, Peter left. He didn't say, you know, Philip left when he, he gave the full gospel to this eunuch. He went away rejoicing. He had the full gospel. Jesus Christ in baptism. When you are in Christ, God does the work. You are no longer, you're not saved by your works. You're saved by his work. His grace. Grace means God's ability to do what you can't do for yourself. Jesus did that on the cross. And when you are baptized into that work, his 
finished work. You are saved. That's why Jesus Christ said in Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be judged against. When, until you get into baptism, you are not in Christ. You are not in his finished work. And once you are in Christ, God, then God has works prepared for us, not for our salvation, but are for sanctification, for our rewards. And that is what's been bothering me all this time. When I read this, this they, people use this Romans chapter 10 and use it as the gospel scenario. That's the full gospel. It is not the full gospel. And if you leave baptism out, you are not in full gospel. The full gospel was presented on the day of Pentecost with Peter and his first sermon. And Jesus Christ, when he left, he gave us the full gospel. And here in, in the book of Acts in, in chapter 8, the eunuch gave them the full gospel. If you believe with all your heart, you will be obedient. Let's just read some more. Let's read a couple more verses on this, the same thing. Let's go to the book of Titus chapter 3. But after... Um, but after the kindness and love of our Lord Savior, this is chapter 3, verse 4, Titus chapter 3, verse 4. But after that, the kindness of God and the love of our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have, we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. There's the full gospel there, people. Let's read this again. Let me just break it down so you can see that this is the full gospel. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. We are not saved by our works. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. That word is the word um, palingenesia. palingenesia. Uh, palingenesia. Uh, I think that's how it's printed. It means rebirth. That means baptism. We know this is baptism. The washing of regeneration, the washing of rebirth. He um, repent and be baptized every one away, or one of you, every every last one of you, for the re washing away of your sin. Washing away of your sin is that's in the, the book of Acts, chapter two. Peter's giving his first sermon. He says, "By the washing of your a rebirth." That's why 3,000 were born again that day. He didn't leave it at that and say, okay, now just confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. No, they got them into the waters of baptism, 3,000 of them that day. He said, this is the full gospel. Jesus Christ in the book of John, chapter 3, unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You can't even see it. You cannot see it because you're not born again. He made it very plain. The full gospel is baptism, which is right here. The washing of rebirth, the washing of regeneration. It's talking about baptism there and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's the, full, that's the same gospel. Guess what? That Peter preached on his first sermon. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So those people who take this, this verse in chapter 10, these verses in chapter 10, out of context, ignore the rest of the full gospel, the only giving part of the gospel. You're only, because they're ashamed. Why? Because they're ashamed of the gospel. They're ashamed of the new birth. Why would they be ashamed of the new birth? Because it means born again. There's a shame of, for some reason, there's a shame of birth. We are ashamed of, of, of the Holy Spirit who births us who is feminine, there is a shame of the gospel. It goes back to the Garden of Eden, people. There will be enmity between you and the woman. That's what he said to, to Satan. There's enmity between you and the woman. That's that shame of the Holy Spirit. Shame of the woman. There's not a person that's born on this earth that hasn't gone through a woman, and yet we, there is this enmity for the woman. Enmity for the Holy Spirit who rebirths us. That's why people are ashamed of baptism. That's why they will not, if they believe with their whole heart, if they believe with their whole heart, as it says in, it says in Romans and in, the, uh, um, and in the book of Acts, if they believe with their whole heart, they will get into the waters of baptism. That is the, the bottom line. Unbelief will not allow you to go there. That seed of Satan that is so strong in you that will not allow you to get into the waters of baptism is the spirit of religion. It's a spirit of shame. It's a spirit of, of um, not really wanting to be regenerated, not really wanting to commit yourself completely to the Lord. 
That is the spirit of unbelief, and you will be judged for it. Those foolish virgins were were left out of the kingdom. They didn't get, uh, weren't allowed in the king in the ten the, the prophecy. I mean, the parable of the ten virgins. Those five virgins were left out because they didn't follow the full gospel. Jesus says to them, "I never knew you, you workers of iniquity." They were still in their sins. They did not obey the full gospel. They were foolish. They knew it and they didn't obey. Obedience is works. The only work that the Lord asks you to do is get to believe and get into the waters of baptism and then let him allow, allow him to do the, the, the process of sanctification. Because once you're a child in somebody's family, that's what baptism does. It rebirths you. It puts you into a new family. It's a spirit of adoption. It's a baptism of adoption. And once you're adopted, guess what? You're always part of that person's family. It's like when you were born into a family... Guess what? You're always going to be the child of that family. I'm always going to be a tailor for my whole life, whether I have a relationship with my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, or not. I will always be a tailor. <laughs> There's nothing I can do to stop being a tailor. I can't divorce myself, kill myself, kill them. There was, nothing would ever stop me from being a tailor. That's what happens in the waters of baptism because Christ finished the work. You, When you're baptized, you are now by God considered dead and because you are also baptized into Christ you are now considered a son and daughter of God not by your works but by his work you are saved by his work and when you are saved by his work you become a part of that family and God begins the process because he's a God the Father God the Holy Spirit are good parents they will discipline you and chastise you and sanctify you by their works and their abilities and your job is to obey he has works, plans for you. You're not going to be just say, oh, I'll confess and then go about your business and do nothing. No, no, it says he who have we has works for, planned for you to do. You have things that he has. He has got a whole schedule um, written out for you to follow in. He's got works for you to do. You're his workmanship. He's the one who's doing the work and he's changing you and he's got things for you to do. And your job is to obey. The first step is in obedience is to get into the waters of baptism, period. You are not saved by grace alone, by, by confession alone. It is follow through, through obedience. If you don't obey, if you don't believe Christ, basically, if you don't believe and get into the words of what, that's what bapt not being baptized is doing. Most people don't know that they need to be baptized because they're not preached. It's not preached to them. The full gospel is not preached to them. Philip, Peter, Paul preached the full gospel. Jesus Preach the full gospel. But there are preachers out there who will not preach the full gospel because they are ashamed of the gospel. And that is the bottom line. They are ashamed. And if you are ashamed of the gospel, Christ will be ashamed of you. That's what he says. If you're ashamed of me, I'm ashamed of you. I will. You won't, you won't preach what I told you to do. Do what I told you to do. Walk in the works I told you to do. Guess what? I'm ashamed of you. You're ashamed of me. I'm ashamed of you. So I think I take this pretty seriously, people. Just because I don't say, thus saith the Lord, doesn't mean I'm not a prophet of God. The Lord gave me these works to do. I'm not sitting here day after day, night after night, under this extremely heavy anointing, just for my own sake. He's given me, this is my work, is to get this straight for you guys out there because he wants you in the kingdom, not outside the kingdom, not in religion, not in your filthy rags. He wants you in the kingdom, in his finished work, and sanctified and cleaned and pure by his ability, by his grace, to do what you couldn't do for yourself. And that's what happens with the spirit of religion. People who don't get into the waters of baptism, what happens is they end up going into the spirit of religion, saying, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to be, be pure, I got to give up, blah, 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 blah. And they end up so, so in bondage to works thinking they got to do it themselves and not realizing that it's already been done. It's been finished. As far as when you get into water's baptism, you are dead to sin. There is no sin on you because there is no sin in Christ. If you're in Christ, there is no sin in you. That's what gives you the power to change. You don't have any power to change unless you do those things. Unless you get into Christ, you don't have any power. You don't have Christ, the Spirit of Christ, and you don't have the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit's not going to indwell you until you've got the Spirit of Christ in you, which means obedience in the waters of baptism and being born again into the baptism of Christ Jesus. Anyway, I don't know. I'm getting really passionate here, but I'm just getting so fed up with hearing the same stupid gospel, this partial gospel, this half gospel, that is leaving people in such, it's leading down a road that they don't know, that, that's going to lead them an, off to the side. It's going to lead them into the the broad road of religion or the and this other road, this other broad road of, of, um, of filth. Anyway. I will talk to you later. I've got more to say, but I this is really hard for me, people. It's not easy for me to to express something. The Lord wants me to go on more into my personal testimony, things that I have left out, not things I have not told you. But I'm really struggling with it because I'm thinking, you guys are not ready for it. You're not ready for what I have to say. Anyway, God bless you. I hope that you understand. You know, if the seed of Satan is so strong on you, you can't hear this word, this simple truth then, you know what, I don't know what else to say, you know, you have, it, belief is a choice, you have to choose to believe, you don't just suddenly, oh, I believe, well, most, for most people, we, we struggle with our unbelief, I do too, I have unbeliefs too, but it's a choice I have to make every day, I choose to believe this, I choose to forgive, I choose to obey, I choose, it's a choice that I'm making, and belief is the same thing, you have to choose to believe, you have to make a choice. You either believe what you, the preacher says, or you believe what the world says, or you believe what Christ says. The bride believes the word. The bride believes her husband. He is the word. And if he says something, the bride says, okay, I may not understand it, but I'll do it anyway. I'll choose to believe it. I make a choice. I choose to believe God. I choose to believe Jesus. I choose to believe his apostles. It's a choice you have to make. And when you make that choice, God is faithful and he comes and cleanses your heart from your unbelief. And it gives you the strength to obey. If you haven't got the strength to obey the Lord, even though you know this is the truth, then you've got some talking to do to the Lord. Because he's not your husband yet. Christ is coming for a, a church, a bride without spot or wrinkle, a church that believes him. Eve had a problem. She didn't believe her husband. She believed the snake over her husband. Actually, her husband didn't say anything to her. Her husband should have been telling her the truth. Over and over again, we hear in the scriptures, in the, in the gospel, Christ saying, truly, truly, I'm saying to you, I'm telling you the truth. He says it over and over and over again. We have a husband who's telling us the truth. We have a husband who's not leaving us to the that wiles of the snake and that devil with lies and deceptions. He's telling us the truth. And he tells us the truth when he says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be judged against. He is our husband. And if you want to be a bride, you have to start believing him. You must make a choice. God bless you. I'll talk to you later.